everyone, and good afternoon, and welcome to The Money Show with Harry Brown. Here we are on a Sunday afternoon, October the 19th, 2005. I'm John Chandler, and I'd like to welcome you again to The Money Show. I'll be hosting the show this afternoon because Harry is giving a speech today in Atlanta. I know we'll all miss Harry this afternoon, but I do hope you'll stay too, because if you do, you'll be in for a rare treat. That's because this afternoon we're fortunate to have with us a very special guest, Mr. Terry Coxon. Terry Coxon is a long-time close associate, friend, and editor of our Harry Brown. By long time, I mean going way back to 1974. Terry is the co-author with Harry Brown of Inflation Proofing Your Investments which was the important book that introduced first to large international audience the idea about the permanent portfolio strategy. Terry is also the author of Using Warrants and Keep What You Earn. That's a book about tax planning and asset protection. Terry has also authored a large number of articles for investment newsletters and financial publications. He was the founder and for over 20 years the manager of the Permanent Portfolio Family of Funds Portfolios. Currently, he is the president of Passport Financial Incorporated. Terry is a highly respected author, authority on portfolio planning, tax and estate planning, and asset protection. Today, Terry will be talking with us about asset protection the different tools people use in an attempt to protect their assets, and the advantages and disadvantages of each of those various asset protection strategies. But before we get to the wisdom of Terry Coxon, I'd like to remind you that you are welcome to call our toll-free number and ask Terry, me, or both of us together any questions that you might have. We'll be happy to try to answer them for you. That toll-free number is 800-259-9231. Again, the number is 800-259-9231. If you have a question, feel free to give it. Give us a call. Ask Terry. Terry has helped thousands of investors, and I'm sure he would welcome your call. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Terry Coxon. Terry, welcome to The Money Show. Well, thank you, John. Glad to be here. We're awfully glad to have you, too. As I mentioned uh, earlier this afternoon, or earlier, uh, you've been working with, Terry, with Harry since uh, 1974. Is that 1974. about right? 1974. That's when I met Harry in Vancouver. And uh, you've been associated with him throughout the newsletter and uh, uh, writing with him uh, books, uh, editing his books and newsletters, articles, and so forth. Uh, for a long, long time, I think you edited about every word that Harry wrote, didn't you? Well, I edited a number of books for Harry, and I also was the editor of his newsletter for his 20-year history. Yes. Well, uh, we're certainly happy to have you, and uh, while you were doing that, you were the founder and president of the Permanent Portfolio Family of Funds, which incidentally, Terry, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Permanent Portfolio Family of Funds is one of the sponsors of the Money Show. So I hear. Well, we're glad to have you. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, we were going to talk about something that is underlying on the minds of most, if not all, investors. And it's on the minds of investors where the market is going up or down. And that problem is one that begins with lack of privacy. It continues with a barrage of lawsuits, frivolous lawsuits, and otherwise. The huge judgments that we've all read about, high taxes and so forth. And... People, investors in general, tend to have it on their mind, but they do tend to uh, worry about it, but they tend to put their head in the sand because it's just not something they want to deal with, although it is a uh, concern of a huge percentage of the investment population. 
uh, protecting their assets for themselves and their family is truly a great concern that almost every investor has. Is, is that something that you've noticed too, Terry, uh, with uh, your the contact that you have with your clients and, and your speaking engagements and so forth? The concern about asset protection is high and it is rising. High because many people have heard about the ridiculous losses that have uh, damaged many, uh, many families. And it's rising because there seems to be no end in sight of the, the lawsuit explosion. Well, we all know, we've heard the stories, the horror stories about uh, lawsuits and so forth. I've read that there are more lawyers in Philadelphia than there are in the entire state, in the entire country of Japan. I've heard there are 50,000 lawsuits filed every day. I've read that uh, uh, one out of five people will be sued this year, which is a little scary because if you take that uh, statistic to conclusion, that means that sometime between now and the next five years, uh, all of us uh, here and listening to this program uh, have a high likelihood of being sued. So uh, to begin our discussions uh, at this section of the program, let's talk a little bit about some of the general principles of asset protection, uh, some of the basic strategies investment, uh, investors use in an attempt to protect their wealth, along with their advantages and uh, disadvantages. So if you would, Terry, why don't you take us through uh, the list and let's discuss each one of them in a sort of a order of uh, uh, ascending power. In other words, let's start with the weakest ones first and build up to the strongest ones. But even though the weak ones have great weaknesses, they do have their place. So if you would, uh, give us a rundown on the uh, several different strategies people use and uh, the ideas uh, about them uh, that you have uh, in your dealings uh, down through the years. Well, the number one principle, before you start to select a particular strategy, plan early. By early, I mean early, early, early. And that's for a couple of reasons. First is a, a general broad reason, planning early. That is, your experience has been like mine. You probably have noted that almost everything important that gets done gets done either at the first opportunity or at the last opportunity. Almost nothing happens in between. Now, if you wait to the last opportunity, you're going to be rushed, you're going to be under pressure, and you probably won't be able to do as good a job as you could have if you'd acted at the first opportunity. Now, that's a broad principle. It's not just about asset protection. It's about anything that's important. Well, asset protection uh, planning is about looking ahead. It certainly is. Uh, and there's, a, there's a specific reason to act early for asset protection. One of the... One of the well, Terry, we're going to get into uh, the reasons for uh, acting now rather than later after the break, uh, and then we'll go into each one of the uh, different strategies we have. Meanwhile, I'm John Chandler filling in with Harry Brown on The Money Show. We hope you'll stay tuned, and we're going to get some interesting strategies right after this break. Come back. We'll be here. This is Harry Brown. My book, Fail Safe Investing, will tell you what you need to know to create your own bulletproof investment portfolio, one that will protect you whatever the future brings, prosperity, inflation, recession, even depression, and it will protect you without your having to predict the future or tinker with the portfolio. Best news of all, at libertyfree.com, you can download the book for only $9.75. That's right, just nine seventy five. You can read the book on your computer screen or print it out and read it in your easy chair. If you're tired of losing money on your investments, tired of the pressure of looking for the best investments, 
Here's the way to have your own bulletproof portfolio, no matter how big or small your savings. To get a free sample chapter from Failsafe Investing, just go to libertyfree.com right now. That's libertyfree.com. Well, hello again, and welcome back to The Money Show with Harry Brown. I'm John Chandler, hosting this afternoon because... Terry is giving a speech in Atlanta. We have with us today our guest, Terry Coxon, who is an expert on tax planning and asset protection. And this show is partially sponsored by the Permanent Portfolio Family of Funds. And if you would like to get in touch with the Permanent Portfolio Family of Funds to learn about the Permanent Portfolio, Aggressive Portfolio, Treasury Bill Portfolio, Bond Portfolio, you should do this. You should call this number, and that's 800 800- 531-5142, 800-531-5142, or look on the web for www.permanentportfolio.com. And while you have your pencil and uh, pen or pencil or pen and paper in hand, uh, keep it handy because later in the program I'm going to give you a telephone number where you can reach Terry Coxon to discuss uh, issues of tax planning, portfolio planning, uh, and things of that nature, uh, asset protection, estate planning, with uh, Terry Coxon, our guest today. To summarize where we left off, uh, we were talking about in terms of asset protection planning, earlier is better than later. And uh, what I would like to add to that is time is on your side if you do plan early. And that's because courts are extremely reluctant to undo transactions that you've undertaken before a specific event exposes you to the threat of a lawsuit. But, catch this, if you wait until a lawsuit emerges, or you're threatened to a lawsuit, or some event occurs where you think you might be sued, then there's probably very little you can do to protect yourself. So earlier truly is better than later. So, Terry, uh, let's get on with some of the uh, strategies that people use to uh, plan well and plan early. And uh, you were getting ready, I think, to introduce us to uh, simple gifts to uh, family members. So I'll let you continue. Go ahead, Terry. Well, the simplest and most uh, uh, uncomplicated way to protect your assets is not to own them anymore. Now, of course, you don't want to throw them away. So the very practical approach can be to make transfers to family members. Uh, the negative in doing that is that, of course, you don't have the property. So you don't want to give away more than you can get by without. And secondly, when you give property to family members, although it is no longer available to attract lawsuits, to yourself, uh, the property may attract a lawsuit to the family member that you gave it to. So uh, you may gain some overall safety by making transfers to people in your family, but it is not a comprehensive or very sturdy solution. Uh, in other words, you get it out of uh, your uh asset liability structure, but you put it into someone else's, and by being in some other person's uh, uh, list of assets, they're themselves vulnerable to lawsuits. That's correct. Now, you may achieve some advantage nonetheless, because if you are in a risky business or a risky profession, and you see that you are a lightning rod for litigation, uh, you can reduce the overall risk by transferring property to a family member uh, with, a, with a lower risk profile. Okay. Uh, I think that pretty well covers that one. It's something that most of us have heard about, uh, some of us have done and have done, and some of us are thinking about doing. But before you do it, don't do it this afternoon. Wait until you hear the rest of the ideas that are going to be presented by Terry. Uh, what's up uh, next in your arsenal of uh, asset protection strategies, Terry? Well, the next step up on the ladder of uh, protection power would be a Swiss annuity. There are insurance companies in Switzerland that do business all around the world, and the annuity deal is pretty much the 
same as you would get in the U.S. You pay a premium, and then you receive uh, earnings on your annuity, and you, at, at your convenience, you can elect to have a lifetime income from the annuity. But the special wrinkle of a Swiss annuity is that under Swiss law, if you name a family member as the beneficiary of your annuity, or uh, if you make an irrevocable election of name anyone as the beneficiary, of, then under Swiss law, the annuity is no longer available to your potential creditors. So that if you were to be sued and if you did lose the lawsuit, at least under Swiss law, the value of the annuity would not be available to the person who won the lawsuit. Now, that sounds nice, and there is some some real protection from it, but the real protection for someone in the U.S. is not nearly as great as it appears at first sight. If you lived in Switzerland and you were a Swiss citizen and all your affairs were within uh, the boundaries of Switzerland, then the asset protection provided by a Swiss annuity would be very strong. The difficulty and where, the reason that it is much weaker in the case of a, an American investor is that regardless of what Swiss law says, you're still here and you still own the annuity. So you can be ordered by a court to liquidate the annuity and bring the money home and uh, at which point it becomes easily available to the person who won a lawsuit. Uh, uh, Terry, uh, this gets into a little area. Uh, Swiss annuities are promoted uh, by uh, some Swiss insurance companies and uh, Swiss promoters as being uh, ironclad asset protection for U.S. citizens. And one of the things they mention to support that is the uh, anti-duress clause that they put in the annuity that says if the insurance company realizes that you are uh, under duress, then uh, they can't honor uh, the uh, court order. But still, uh, it, this is a little puzzling to me because it is, in fact, an asset that's owned by the U.S. citizen and under the control of the U.S. citizen. And so where and how do you go about solving that dilemma of the uh, duress clause in the annuities? Well, the reason the duress clause doesn't give all the protection that uh, is hoped for uh, is it's kind of a psychological reason. For the duress clause to operate with a Swiss annuity, someone has to tell the insurance company and tell the insurance company convincingly that you are under duress. Now, who's going to do that? Uh, maybe maybe you would do it, but early on, before there is an apparent problem, of course you're not going to notify the insurance company that you're under duress. But by the time that you are under duress, you may be facing a contempt of court problem if you indicate with the insurance company frustrate a payment of a likely judge. Let's get back to this right after the break. Uh, this is The Money Show with Harry Brown. Stay tuned. We're going to be dealing with more interesting topics in just a moment. This is Harry Brown. Have you lost money in stocks over the past few years? From 2000 through 2002, the stock market lost a third of its value. But during those three years, a bulletproof portfolio gained 9%. And over the past 34 years, such a portfolio gained an average of over 9% per year throughout periods of prosperity, inflation, and recession with no wide swings in value. My book, Failsafe Investing, shows how you can have that kind of portfolio for yourself. And now you can download the book for only $9.75. You don't have to rely on alleged market wizards or stay up late worrying about your savings. Failsafe Investing will show you how to have the security that you crave. 
Go to LibertyFree.com to see a sample chapter of Fail Safe Investing and then start protecting the savings you've worked so hard to acquire. That's LibertyFree.com. Well, hello again and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to The Money Show this afternoon. I think we still have time to have a question or two if you'd like to call in. A uh, question for Terry Coxon. Uh, that number again is 800-259-9231. And while you have your pen and paper handy, I'll give you a telephone number where you can reach uh, Mr. Coxon to discuss with him uh, asset protection, tax planning, estate planning, uh, portfolio planning, and so forth. Uh, you can reach Terry Coxon at area code 707-545-9331. That's area code 707-545-9300. Terry, let's uh, continue on and finish up the uh, problem with Swiss annuities and the uh, and duress clause and how it doesn't provide uh, asset protection for U.S. citizens that it does for a Swiss citizen. Go ahead, Terry. A U.S. citizen with a Swiss annuity won't get the full asset protection that Swiss law seems to provide because the U.S. person is right here and he's subject to the orders of a U.S. court. And if he's already embroiled in a lawsuit and he communicates with the insurance company to say, duress, duress, uh, it's risking uh, a problem of being in contempt of court and that involves serious penalties. Uh, if you are in the middle of a lawsuit and you ask your lawyer, uh, should I tell my Swiss insurance company that I'm under duress, your lawyer is going to say, don't do it, because your lawyer knows about the problem of uh, risking a contempt of court status. Okay, good. Uh, there are advantages there, and that is a tool that can be used, and it's certainly a tool that can be used when packaged with uh, other strategies uh, that we'll get to in a little while. But before we get to other strategies that can incorporate the Swiss annuity, uh, let's uh, move on to another uh, particular strategy that's used, uh, and a pretty powerful strategy at that, Terry, and that is uh, using a domestic trust. That is a trust that's formed here in the United States. States. Just the next step up on the ladder of asset protection is a trust formed in the United States, probably under the laws of your of your own state. Uh, it can be used to reliably protect property for family members, for dependents, for your potential heirs, for anyone you want to take care of. Uh, the there's really two limitations to it. One is that you must not be a beneficiary of the trust. If you have any interest in the trust, whatever that is, that right claim against the trust is available to your creditors. So that if you win, if you lose a lawsuit, the victor can reach into your domestic trust to take whatever uh, you had a right to. Hold on, Terry. That's if you name yourself as a beneficiary. That's right. Oh, well, that sounds like that creates a few problems also. Well, uh, that, that is correct. Uh, the domestic trust works well for property that you don't need and that you're confident you are never going to need. Oh, and, and that it seems like it would create a little bit of a problem, too, for uh, estate planning also. Well, no. Uh, the... Uh, the, the, the domestic trust uh, can be used as part of an estate plan. Uh, now, of course, you shouldn't walk into it blindly without uh, thinking about the estate tax or the gift tax uh, ramification. Uh, but the presence of estate tax rules and gift tax rules uh, shouldn't prevent you from using a domestic trust or asset protection. No, but uh, it seems to me it could be a little bit of a problem for estate planning because uh, you might have a difficult job doing a thorough job of estate planning uh, without being concerned about uh, planning yourself into the poorhouse because none of us know uh, how long we may live. Well, of course, of course. 
you would not want to transfer so much to a domestic trust that you left yourself in uh, financial difficulty. And that is one of the limitations of using a domestic trust. But it is very powerful uh, asset protection device, uh, provided you don't name yourself as a beneficiary uh, and have access to uh, the funds, uh, which uh, serves a very, very strong purpose. But uh, it's also a deterrent to many people who want to form the trust. Uh, they worry about uh, not having assets available to them if they need it or want it. For some that is correct. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Uh, so does that pretty well take care of uh, the domestic trust I theory? think so. I think so. Okay. What's the next uh, next step up on the, the ladder of asset uh, protection? Yes. It would be a domestic limited liability company. It's a company that would be formed probably under the laws of your own state, and uh, you'd be the manager, so you'd control it, or someone that you felt you could rely on would be the manager. Uh, ownership uh, usually is shared among family members, uh, even if uh, most family members have only a token interest in it. You form the domestic uh, LLC, and then you transfer into it the assets you, that you want to protect. Now, the safety that you get from a domestic LLC is that generally uh, the court will not interfere with the business of, of a limited liability company in order to satisfy the claims of the creditors of any particular owner of the limited liability company. So if you've transferred uh, the bulk of your assets to your family LLC, uh, you stop being an attractive target for lawsuits. Uh, if anyone's sizing you up for a potential lawsuit, he's going to uh, try to evaluate your assets, and he's going to find that there's not much left that you own personally. Most of it is inside the family LLC, and that's going to be very difficult for him to break into. And as a result, uh, he may just give up and go on to some uh, softer targets. What if the uh, investor owns a large uh, percentage of ownership of the LLC? Uh, it seems to me, uh, in the way I understand it, uh, typically what the uh, courts would do uh, under these circumstances would be to issue something known as a charging order. Uh, would you like to explain the charging order and uh, what, how that affects the... Yeah. Yes. Uh, a charging order would be issued for the benefit of your creditor if you lost a lawsuit. And it would direct the LLC to pay over to the lawsuit winner any amounts that otherwise would have been distributed to you from the limited liability company. Now, that charging order doesn't require the LLC to actually make any decisions. Okay, Terry, uh, we'll continue on with uh, finishing up the uh, uh, domestic LLC, and we're not going to have much time left, but we need to talk about uh, uh, IBCs as well as offshore trusts. So we're going to have to move quickly. I uh, hope you'll stay tuned because we're getting to the best part of the show. It'll be coming up right after this break. I'm John Chandler for The Money Show and Harry Brown. Welcome back to The Money Show. I'm John Chandler, hosting today in Harry Brown's absence. Uh, we have with us today a guest. Uh, Terry Coxon, who's discussing asset protection. Uh, we hope you'll uh, stay tuned, and we hope you're getting uh, some useful information uh, this afternoon. Uh, we will continue on with the uh, climbing up the ladder of power in asset protection. But before, but before we do, if I can summarize, uh, Terry, with regard to uh, domestic LLC, uh, the domestic LLC can let you play a waiting game. That is correct. And it can help you no negotiate a settlement uh, with whoever it is that's attacking your assets. That is right. But, and it's a big but, 
while the attacker uh, waits for his money, you must also wait because the charging order says is if you get any distribution from the LLC, uh, he could get it. Uh, do I have that to understand that correctly, Terry? I understand it perfectly. You get an A. Ah, good. I was hoping for an A plus, but I'll uh, I'll wait to uh, we finish the discussion on the next uh, step up the ladder in asset protection, uh, which is Terry. Next step up is a foreign LLC or an international business company. It can work just the same way as a domestic LLC, but it gives you the added protection of having any controversy settled in courts of a country that you have chosen, courts uh, where you are confident that the laws will be respected, property rights are respected, and uh, a jurisdiction that is not overrun with results-oriented judges. The big worry with a domestic LLC, although it has serious protective power, the big worry is that you will find yourself in front of a judge in the United States who doesn't really care what the law says. He's just going for the results that he thinks are right. And he can sweep away all the legal formalities and disregard your domestic LLC. So you can protect against that problem, get greater asset protection, foreign limited liability companies. Well, uh, that sounds good, but it's uh, my understanding that foreign corporations uh, with uh, perhaps one uh, rather technical exception that has to be adhered to stringently and uh, often uh, at the onset uh, it can have potential adverse tax consequences to a U.S. citizen. It doesn't matter whether it's an LLC or what kind of foreign corporation it is. Uh, LLC is just another kind of foreign corporation, and it's uh, like an international business corporation or an international LLC. It still seems to me there's potential risk there in, with regard to the uh, very adverse tax consequences that can occur. Uh, would you uh, give us a little enlightenment on that idea, Terry? You can use a foreign LLC for asset protection in a way that is completely income tax neutral. It won't add to your income tax bill. It won't subtract from your income tax bill. And it's pretty simple to do it. Uh, when you organize your uh, foreign LLC, there is a one-page form that you file with the IRS uh, by which you elect to have it treated as a partnership. So all the incidents of taxation just flow through the LLC to you. There's no tax at the company level, and there's no tax on your transfers to uh, your foreign LLC, and uh, there's no tax if you decide to liquidate your foreign LLC. So it's it's only if you you act out of out of ignorance uh, that using a foreign LLC will cause tax problems. Uh, would that be the same form that you'd fill out for any uh, foreign corporation, Terry? For any entity, same form. If you organize an LLC in the U.S., you'll file that form and elect to have it treated uh, for tax purposes, probably as a partnership. Well, that, uh, that does uh, sound like it belongs uh, on a high rung of the asset protection uh, uh, ladder. Uh, each of these uh, basic strategies that you discuss uh, offer some uh, advantages and some protection, uh, but none of them seem to do the job uh, truly thoroughly. Uh, do we have more uh, rungs on the ladder to climb? And if so, where? One we're, more rung. One more rung? It puts you in the most protected, powerful position you can have, and that's with a lawful offshore trust. It would be a trust organized in a no-tax jurisdiction and organized in a jurisdiction where property rights are protected and where 
the stated law is taken seriously. Uh, you transfer property to your offshore trust. Uh, you name the people who should be beneficiaries. They know. Hold on a minute, Terry. Now, with an offshore trust, you can name yourself as a beneficiary. That is correct. You can be a beneficiary. Good. When we come back after the break, we're going to have uh, about uh, four minutes to discuss the various advantages of an offshore trust. So I uh, hope you'll stay with us, and I will give you the telephone number where you can reach Mr. Coxon for assets and tax planning information. So please stay tuned on this beautiful autumn afternoon in October. I'm John Chandler filling in with Harry Brown. This is Harry Brown. My book, Fail Safe Investing, will tell you what you need to know to create your own bulletproof investment portfolio, one that will protect you whatever the future brings, prosperity, inflation, recession, even depression, and it will protect you without your having to predict the future or tinker with the portfolio. Best news of all, at libertyfree.com, you can download the book for only $9.75. That's right, just nine seventy five. You can read the book on your computer screen or print it out and read it in your easy chair. If you're tired of losing money on your investments, tired of the pressure of looking for the best investments, here's the way to have your own bulletproof portfolio, no matter how big or small your savings. To get a free sample chapter from Fail Safe Investing, just go to libertyfree.com right now. That's libertyfree.com. Thank you. Thank you very much for staying with us here at the Money Show with Harry Brown. I'm John Chandler, hosting today because Harry is making a speech in Atlanta. We have with us today our guest, Terry Coxon. And if you have your pen handy, I will give you the number where you can reach Terry Coxon to discuss uh, any issues like we've been talking about today. And don't hesitate to give him a call. Uh, tell him what your situation is and ask him if he can help you and how. Uh, you'll find Terry is as straight as 6 o'clock, and he will welcome your call. Terry's cell phone number is area code 707 545 9300. 707-545-9300. Terry, we have uh, roughly three minutes to talk about the benefits of a offshore trust, so I hope you can talk a lot faster than a Texan. <laughs> well, the advantage of an offshore trust is that if you form it at a time when you are not threatened with a lawsuit, at a time when you are solvent, pay all your obligations, you form it under those circumstances, then it is virtually impossible for any future lawsuit creditor to break into it. You can be confident that that money is safe, and it's safe not just for other family members, but it's safe for you because you can be a beneficiary of your own offshore trust so that you get your assets out of harm's way and they are always available or your support when you need them. The offshore trust that you form also can be the ideal place for estate planning because it allows you to make transfers and get property out of your taxable estate while keeping it available for your own support anytime you need it. And on top of that, an offshore trust can be your portal to investment opportunities that are blacked out in the U.S., investment opportunities that can add to the safety of your portfolio, that can add to profit, and that can lead to income tax planning advantage. So you get the best of everything with an offshore trust, all the advantages that you might get with anything else, and additional safety, much stronger safety. And if you want to continue to manage your own affairs, you can put an LLC inside your offshore trust. Property is safe, but if you're the manager of the LLC, you can control how investment decisions are made. So you have as much flexibility as you would like, and you get the maximum active protection cost. So, Terry, you don't just send your money offshore 
cross your fingers and hope for the best. You do have a way to uh, if, to guide the trustee with regard to the investments that they use. You do have a way where if you uh, want to or you have an a, a, a investment advisor that's using today, he can manage your you can, can manage them or he can continue managing. That is correct. You can have complete investment flexibility with an offshore. Great. Uh, feel free to call Terry. Uh, he'll be happy to discuss it with you. That his number again, 707-545-9300. I'm sure glad you joined us today. It was great fun. Uh, we talked about a subject that uh, is very, very enjoyable to me. I hope you learned a little bit. And we hope you'll come back next week when Harry's back on the air with me. So come back next week. Do you hear, please? Come back. As Harry says, come back. Come back, sweet papa.